Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. So, as you guys saw in my last video, I'm trying to make my videos more faith-based. And I thought a great way to start that was to continue my Bible study on the Sermon on the Mount. I made my first video on chapter 5 in Matthew, and we're just going to continue right along to chapter 6. It's not going to be anything too crazy. As you can probably hear in the background, there is construction going on outside of my house. So we're just going to roll with it. It's just a really pretty day and it's the perfect day to do a video outside. And I just really like to do them outside. I think it's nice and it just makes me feel happier. So that's what we're going to do. I have a cup of coffee. So if you want to grab some coffee, go for it. But let's get started. We are going to read chapter 6 in Matthew, and I am going to read each section and then stop after each section, do a little discussion. If you want to add anything to it, don't be scared to comment down below. I'd love to discuss something, especially if you don't agree with something that I say down in the comments. Just nicely say why, and I am all for having conversations, and maybe it'll even lead to a future video that we can do. Okay, let's get started. Matthew 6, Giving to the Needy. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Okay, I really, I really like that one because I feel like as Christians, we feel like people need to see us being Christians all the time and see everything we do. And this right here is just saying, like, it doesn't matter who knows what you're doing. Like, it's good to let others know what you're doing when you're trying to, um, you know, help other people find Christianity. But you don't need to go to church every week and go to your fellow Christians and say, well, I did this. What did you do? Because in the end, the only person who needs to know what your heart believes and how your heart acts is God. That's the only person. And do them not because you want something out of them, but just do it because you know it's right. And I really like when it says don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing because that's one of those things that's like, well, how can I not know what I'm doing? But I like to think of it as just because you did something good yesterday doesn't mean you can just relax today like don't tell yourself oh I was good yesterday so it's fine today like don't think about what you've done just do what you're supposed to be doing you know that kind of thing the next part is called the Lord's Prayer which if you don't know that is a very popular thing I'm in the LCMS and we say the Lord's Prayer in every single service. If you don't know the Lord's Prayer, I think it's a great thing to learn because it just kind of teaches you how to pray. Um, it has different parts of it and there are, there are <laughs> I'm, stu I'm stumbling over my words. But um, one thing I really like about my church is sometimes in our church prayer, we go in each part. So we'll say, the first line is our father in heaven and we go on and it and i keep getting distracted um but we go on and we explain it more for ourselves for others and we just really like take each section and change it to how it fits in our lives so anyways we're gonna get on to the actual bible reading <laughs> the lord's prayer and when you pray, you must, no, sorry, the wind, try it again. The Lord's Prayer. 
And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray to go into your room, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our de debtor, de debtors. Sorry if I say that wrong. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Okay, so if that sounds a little different than how your church says it, it's because, again, I am i didn't say this at the beginning, but I, I am expecting myself to put a disclaimer. Um, this is the ESV version. I just read it for my personal study because it's a lot easier for me to understand. If I'm not so sure about what something saying being accurate, I will go look up different translations because I believe it's really important to make sure what you're being taught is correct. Um, but so it's a little different than even how my church says it. We say it from the King James version. So um, some of the yours are thy and there's a like our father in heaven is um, a little different, that kind of thing, but it means the same thing overall. So whenever it talks about this, first, of course, it talks about not doing it in front of people to get a reward because it does nothing when you're just showing it off. And I like that it says the people who do it for attention, they get their reward. But when you go, go pray in your room, shut the door, do it in secret, and you will get, like, the ultimate reward. And I also love that it says, you don't need to have this big fancy prayer. This is a big problem, I feel like, in public Christianity, is that everyone feels like they always have to have the perfect words. And here, it literally says, don't have these empty phrases like the Gentiles because they think I'll hear them just because they say a lot. And in reality, I already know what you need and you don't really have to say anything. Just say this prayer and I'll be listening and I will hear what your heart is needing and I will give you what is best for you. And then I also love at the end that it says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And I think this is something that is very hard for people. Forgiveness is probably one of the hardest things to do in the Bible, but it is so important because if we don't forgive, our hearts are filled with hatred and we can't go to heaven and be with God if we're filled with hatred. Now we're going to go on the next section, which is fasting, which is the section that I am not the most familiar with. Um, fasting is something I was never really taught about. Um, I've gone to multiple different churches and none of them have ever mentioned it. So it was really interesting. Like they mentioned it for like Lent, but that's it. They never talked about just fasting normally. So. We're gonna read this section and maybe I'll talk about it a little, but this is something I'd love if you guys know a lot about to put down in the comments below. Fasting. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who is in secret. 
and your father who sees in secret will reward you. So this is very similar. It's saying don't, don't go, oh, life is so hard without whatever you're fasting from. Just so that everyone knows you're fasting from it. It's saying, you know, pick your head up, wash your face, clean yourself up, present yourself, be strong. Like you chose to do it. And the whole point of you fasting is to prove to yourself that you don't need that as much as you need God. And so I just think that's really good. The next section is lay up treasures in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So in here, it's talking about not idolizing money and putting your heart where it should be. So many people, especially today, are so obsessed with how much money and what luxuries they have and they're not thinking about what happens after this life but they're not thinking about the long term they're thinking about short term which is just our normal earthly life that we have right now and this is such such a good example when he talks about you can't be full of white and darkness you're either light which shines all the way through or your darkness and there's no light if it's all darkness and so he also goes on to talk about masters is you can't fully serve two masters if i am a farmer for both people i have to split my time between them and i might end up favoring one or the other and i'm either gonna really like this one and really hate this one or I'm going to have to quit one. Like there's no, you can't feel the exact same about both sides. It's not possible. You're always going to have a favorite above the other. It's, my phone's kind of falling. There we go. It's kind of like when kids are trying to figure out who um, is the favorite of their parent. One of those situations. Okay. Sorry, my phone's been sliding slowly and I didn't notice. Um, okay, so do not be anxious is the last section of chapter six. So we are almost done and we'll have another part for chapter seven. And then we might go on to eight. Eight technically isn't part of the Sermon on the Mount, so I don't know if we'll go into that. That might be a, another part of a different study that I decide to do. Okay, do not be anxious. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, therefore do not be anxious, saying, 
What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Okay, I really like that one. I was always a very super, super, super futuristic person. I always wanted to have everything planned and <laughs> I felt like this was written for people like that <laughs> where it says, stop worrying so much about what's gonna happen tomorrow, what's gonna happen in a week, what's gonna happen in 10 years because in the long run, it doesn't matter. What matters is what happens today and also, worrying about what's going to happen in 10 years only makes it less likely for you get to get to be there in 10 years. And I really like that it brings that up because anxiety is so bad on our bodies mentally, physically, spiritually, and God provides for us. It says that if you are more worried about what your job in the kingdom is, all of these earthly things that you're so worried about are going to be given to you somehow. And I think that's so important because if you are a child of God and you are part of his kingdom, you are going to have other people you go to church with or you have cared for and they're going to help you if you need help. And I think this really shows that like you are not alone. God is there for you. He put people to be there for you. He provided food for you. He provides everything you have is here because God provided it for you. He can make the choice to take it all away. So don't worry about it. He has given this all to you and he can keep giving this all to you and worry more about what you need to be doing for God, for his kingdom, to help others get to join you in this beautiful place that we all get to go to eventually. And I just really love that. But that is all for this video, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment down below some comments or facts or corrections of things. And I hope to get to make another video for you guys about this Sermon on the Mount. It is our last chapter about it. So I'll talk to you guys later.